Senator from Alabama. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, here we go again. Uh, I cannot believe I'm here today on the Senate floor talking about Americans dying at the hands of illegal aliens. I said I'd do this every week and give an update on the young people and people of our country that are dying at the hands of illegal aliens, specifically young people. Our kids are dying because of Joe Biden's immigration policies. I was on the floor last week talking about the death of Lake and Riley, a young woman who was running around the University of Georgia, minding her own business, when she was abducted and brutally beaten, unrecognizable by an illegal alien from Venezuela. Just a week ago, I came to the floor to talk about the death of Washington State Trooper Chris Gadd. He was on duty at a DUI checkpoint when Raul Benitez Santana, an illegal alien from Mexico, drunk behind the wheel, crashed into Trooper Gadd's police cruiser. Trooper Gadd was 27 years old. There are so many other young people who need to be, need and deserve to be recognized and remembered. So many sad examples of the deadly impact this administration's open border policies have had in this country. It is a shame. In December, Travis Wolf, 12-year-old boy from Missouri, was riding with his parents when their car was struck head-on by another vehicle, driving down the wrong side of the road, 70 miles per hour. The wrong side of the road, 70 miles per hour. Court documents revealed that the driver of the other car that crashed into Todd uh, Travis Wolf was an illegal alien from Venezuela. 12 year old Travis spent the last three months on life support. He died on March the 6th. His family hasn't received an apology from Joe Biden. They're not going to get a, an apology from Secretary Mayorkas. They just buried their 12 year old son. Do my colleagues care? Do they care? Last August in Ohio, a minivan driven by Hermano Joseph, an illegal alien from Haitian, collided with a bus that was carrying 52 kids and was headed to school for the very first day. Though he was from Haiti, Joseph illegally entered the country through the southern border. 26 kids were hospitalized. 26. One child, 11-year-old Aiden Clark, was ejected from the bus and pronounced dead at the scene. In Aiden's obituary, his family wrote that he loved daily vegetable gardening with his dad, trampolining with his sister and snuggling with his mom. 12 years old. Aiden's life was taken far too soon. Travis Wolf will not get to grow up. Trooper Gad had a wife and a two-year-old daughter. His daughter will never see her father again. Lake and Riley will never become a nurse. She will never hang out with her friends again or celebrate a victory at the University of Georgia with her friends and family. Losing a child is a parent's worst nightmare. We can't possibly imagine what their families are going through, but we can work to prevent more deaths from occurring. We know what needs to be done. People in this body need to know what to be done. People on the other end of the building in the house knows what needs to be done. The people in the White House know what's need to be done to protect these lives. President Biden can authorize and use the laws that have been given to him from previous administrations. He can do that. He doesn't need more laws. He can use the laws that have already been written. 
He can finish the border wall, which he stopped, and now is selling all the materials that are at the border to build this wall that the American taxpayers have paid for. They're selling it for 10 cents on the dollar. You can't make this up. He can stop exploiting the Department of Homeland Security's parole authority by letting in millions of people without screening or processing. President Biden can stop supporting sanctuary cities where law enforcement officers are blocked from working with federal officers to get criminal aliens off the streets and out of our communities. President Biden can bring back order to our country. We're losing it daily. He can do all these things right now. He doesn't need another law. The laws are there. Just go by the laws. He himself suspended the border wall. He authorized Homeland Security to continue paroling people without consequences. He and his blue state supporters set up shelters in the middle of cities and suburbs to house illegal aliens indefinitely, costing you, the American citizen and taxpayers, billions of dollars when we have homeless and veterans on the streets not taken care of. Hospitals, schools, and other community resources have been depleted, depleted by being forced to provide for both U.S. citizens and the millions of illegal aliens crossing the border. U.S. citizens are paying for all this, not the Biden administration, the U.S. citizens. It's their right. It's embarrassing. Our country's leadership must be reminded of their greatest responsibility, the safety and security of Americans. Number one responsibility. This administration could care less. Let's look at a recent example of a country's prioritizing safety for its citizens. What has the Dominican Republic been doing in response to gang violence and unrest in Haiti? Because Haitians are coming to the Dominican Republic. What are they doing? They secured their border. The Biden administration established a parole boat program specifically for Haitians. Our immigration policy priorities are completely misaligned and totally opposite of what they're doing at the Dominican Republic. With our duty to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, they are letting our guard down. So states are taking matters into their own hands. Yesterday, the Supreme Court ruled that a new Texas law which allows state and local law enforcement to arrest and detain, deport illegal aliens could go into effect while under review at the lower court level. But late last night, the Fifth Circuit Court again blocked enforcement of the new Texas law ahead of oral arguments. This is a crime. The Supreme Court has spoken. So while the Biden administration won't arrest, detain, or deport illegal aliens, Texas would have been, been doing so. It's shameful that a state has to take matters into their own hands like this. It's embarrassing that President Biden's Department of Homeland Security sued Texas for implementing immigration laws, which they should have been implementing themselves. But they have a different agenda. They want more people in this country to vote for this administration. Americans are being killed by illegal aliens, and the president simply cannot be bothered. The blood of Lake and Riley, Trooper Gadd, Travis Wolf, Aiden Clark, and so many other Americans, the blood's on his hands. The blood of Lake and Riley, Trooper Gadd, Travis Wolf, and so many others, they won't be forgotten. Democrats say their open border policies are motivated by compassion. We have compassion for people coming in this country. Whose compassion? Democrats have plenty of compassion for illegals. 
What about American citizens, taxpayers, the young people in this country that are dying at the hands of these illegal aliens that should not be here, but only are here because of this administration? They don't seem to have compassion for victims or any crime. Joe Biden last week apologized that he called an illegal alien illegal in the State of the Union address. That sets the scene for everything. They could care less about the American citizen. They care more about people from other countries. This is madness. This madness must end. We can't wait till an election. We can't let four or five million more people in. We can't let hundreds of people die at the hands of these illegal aliens. Our children's lives are at stake and our country is at stake. Mr. President, I yield the floor.